Hey guys, how's it going? Um, here's video five of my series on on the bootloader implementation, and I'm sorry for the guys that are following this live as it happens that you have to wait an entire week for the next video to come out. Thing is, I have a really busy schedule. I'm taking five classes right now to finish school: uh, differential equations, physics two, philosophy, psychology, and physics two laboratory. On top of that, I have a full-time firmware engineering job. And then on top of all of that, I try to do some things that uh, get me away from the computer. You know, I like to play basketball, go to the gym, so that I can have somewhat of a balanced life. So that leaves very little time for my whole YouTube stuff that I have going on or any personal projects. But nevertheless, if you're watching this sometime in the future, then you're lucky because all the videos should be out by now. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and keep adding to the functionality of the bootloader. I am also going to release the desktop application, which I've modified um, so that you can use it and we can test the bootloader. Um, I'm not sure if the bootloader will be ready for testing in this video. I said it would, but I'm not sure. Depending how long I want to make this video, I could just break it up into two and then it should be ready by the next video. But we'll see how it goes. Okay, if you guys recalled from the last video, I did mention that I wanted my bootloader to be a sort of a state machine, right? To have that type of design. So to do that, we're going to, of course, need to make some states, um, which I've already have here, some bootloader states that it could be in. And depending on these states is what function will run. And also depending on what state is in, then that will dictate what state should come next and if for some reason we get commands that don't coincide with the current state that we're in then we know we have some sort of error so that means we should implement some type of error handling mechanism so far right now this is what I have um, we'll see how this can be better elaborated and how we're going to use this in the uh, in the future uh, the other thing we're gonna need obviously is are if anytime you're making a sort of state machine you're going to need some functions that are associated with each state so here's a function uh, pointer and all my states are going to return a frame so if i'm in a, an idle state or for some reason or in this kind of state or in this state then um, i should be returning a frame whether i'm going to do something with that frame um, I haven't decided yet. Obviously, if I'm updating, then the return type is going to be like an ACK, right? That the update was successful or the, um, or maybe I could tell it to send me another frame, things of that nature. But again, we will elaborate on this as time goes on. So this right here is nothing more than a function pointer. Um, actually, it's going to be an array of three. Um, so far for the three states that I have, of course, this can and probably will grow. So the next logical step is to initialize these uh, state functions with their respective um, actual functions. So I'm going to put that here in bootloader main. And again, right now, the organization of these files and everything might get a little messy. Once I have a working design, then I'm going to go ahead and start to clean things up and move things like this, for example, would be in a config file and things of that nature. But I'm not too worried about that right now. We'll get to that bridge uh, in a minute. I'm not sure if that's a, a good design pattern or idea rather to leave the organization at till the end. But right now, I kind of just want to get this thing going. So here are my bootloader state functions go ahead and save this so what we have here is um, this right here which is a type which is this right here um, and let me make this bigger so that you guys can see um, I don't want to make it too big because then it becomes annoying for me to see um, if you guys can uh, go ahead and make your screen full size or something um, so I've made I'm initializing all three elements of this function pointer array and one is going to be the idle state the start update state 
and these are all enumerated right here from 0 to 2 so um, the first index of this um, thing will have a so this is basically a function pointer right and I'm assigning it this function so when I call this function pointer with this index it will execute this function right so that should make sense guys um, so I have this idle state function this update state function and up or oh, start update function and updating state function now let's go ahead and implement those and obviously I have those implemented already already so I'm gonna go ahead and and copy them um, one by one and I guess explain what's going on so here's my idle state let me go ahead and put this right here and uh, let me add this little thing here just because it's a little more visually appealing for me and it kind of just helps me separate the code okay um, so here's my idle state function obviously this function is always gonna is gonna be the first one to run because I will initialize uh, my let's make an actual um, a variable that's going to hold um, my state and I'm going to initialize it to default um, to be what do you call it um, idle so copy that over here and I will where can we put it let's put it right here for now so here's a bootloader uh, state and and that of course is this right here and this is the look again I spelled that wrong and of course the initial state is going to be idle I'm also going to make a little function it's just a helper function um, just to set that state to whatever state I want it to be in so let's add that let's add that at the very end here uh, so this function is nothing more than just a tiny little helper function when I want to change the state so gosh uh, bootloader current state equals state so this right here is just a function to obviously change the states okay so and that's this function that's being changed right here so I've established a global variable that will hold my states so let's go to this first function the idle state function uh, this one is going to be running all the time um, initially and it's gonna only execute if parse frame returns true parse frame we went over this last time that it's simply going to wherever the hell it is here it is it's gonna um, assembly frame for me to read or do something with um, and of course there's still things to do here um, so if we go back here to the idle state so once I have a parse to frame I will go through the received I will examine the the frame ID so what kind of frame is it is it a start up oops is it a start update frame and if it is then I'm going to change the state of the system to state updating right here and then I will reset the received frame I'm not sure if I've already made this function if I not okay I have not then we'll go ahead and implement that and all this is going to do is take my received frame because remember that received frame is just a buffer it's a temporary thing uh, and it's here so received frame is what we're assembling um, all the bytes we received in so we've we've gone in here and once I've received the frame and I've parsed it and I say okay it's an update frame or whatever it is then I want to clear that frame so that um, anything else that comes in can have a clean slate to work with um, so I, I reset the frame and then I send another frame right because remember I just got a, a frame that took that its uh, ID was start an update so then I'm sending an ACK frame to back to the application. So let's go over um, some of the things here that are not implemented yet. For example, the reset frame, received frame. I'm going to go ahead and paste that function to reset a, the received frame right over here.
So again, that's all we're doing is just taking that received frame um, and just making everything clean and erasing the payload and everything so that there's no uh, residual data there from anything that we've received in the past. The next thing we're going to examine is the fact that I'm sending here something and I'm sending back an act frame. As you can see, I'm giving it the obviously the address of the act frame um, that I want to send. However, that is not implemented. So let's go ahead and start implementing some of the, that stuff. So the first thing is that um, I'm going to implement the actual. I'm going to implement both of them. And they're going to be up here where this one is. So I have a received frame. Now I'm going to implement an act frame and a knack frame. So these are frames that are basically, they're never going to change, right? They're just a frame. Um, the, um, the ID is already set in stone. Payload doesn't need to be anything. It's just a simple act frame and an act frame. Now I need a place to initialize these. So obviously I can in initialize these over here or something, but let's make a, a function and let's call, call it like bootloader init and we'll initialize things there. So I'm going to make that function right there. Magic of copy and paste, right? Um, so now this function is taking that act frame and um, assigning it the starter frame bit or field then the frame ID is act frame. The payload length um, is that. But again, this doesn't matter because I'm not necessarily checking that right now. CRC is whatever. And then end of frame. That's it. And payload can be anything for for right now. Um, I'm not really concerned about that. I'll figure that out. Um, and here's the NAC frame. Again, initializing, uh, initializing that also. Um, Furthermore, we need to add our um, things here. So there's bootloader in it. It's idle state. Um, what else did I implement? The reset. Uh, reset received. And I believe this one. Okay, so that takes care of the idle state function. So I went over this, this, uh, this should work now. This is fine, this is fine. Let's make sure everything builds because that way I can see if I forgot to um, implement something. Okay. Okay, so we have five errors. So let's see what I have here that I forgot to uh, implement. Uh, update state function on the clip. Okay, yeah, I haven't done these yet. So we'll do that in just a second. But let's try this again. Um, two errors. Implicit decorate. That's a warning, warning, error. Send frame. Uh, send frame. Do I not have that here? Let's see. Where I hate scrolling on cube ID is so slow. <laughs> um, run that one more time. Okay, zero errors. One warning. Warning. Control reaches end of non void function. Uh, and which one is this one? My ninety one. Obviously, my functions all have return types. And here, obviously, what is this? the idle state frame I have a return of uh, act frame let me go back well it compiles fine it builds fine um, so here what it's telling me is that I'm not returning anything for now I I'm not sure if I've made the um, desktop application actually check for the act frame I'll check and I'll fix this if I do but for now let's just have it return zero uh, so that way we have no errors or warnings over here. Because that's the most beautiful thing in the world to see. Oh, Lord. <laughs> uh, incompatible. What the hell did I do? Oh, okay. It, it, it's not... um. 
right here. So we're gonna have to type cast this into this type because it's expecting that's the return type. Um, you fix one error and then you get two. They multiply. Okay, what the hell am I doing here? Conversion to non-scalar type request. Oh, Lord have mercy. Okay, you know what? Let's just, to make this thing happy, let's just return that. Even though having no return is not necessarily, um, wasn't an error, it was just a warning. But this is right here. This is how you can go to sleep at night in peace. Um, okay, so that's that. Now, that's, let's see how much time I have. 15 minutes. Okay, you know what? I'm going to cut it short right here because these I hate these videos get to like 20 minutes. Um, I feel like that's got to be annoying. So in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and implement these two functions. And I'll quickly go through them. And then we'll go from there. All right, guys.